We're at a geographically isolated wetland at the Jones Center Itchaway, and this is an active study site for a USDA project we're working on on wetlands. This is one of our reference sites, meaning it's relatively undisturbed. Well, wetlands are super important. I think for a long time, wetlands have been regarded as wastelands, but they're incredibly important uh, on the landscape for their ecosystem services. Ecosystem service is a benefit that nature provides to people essentially for free. And that could be water filtration, that could be building of soils, that could be uh, intake of carbon from the atmosphere. Um, these are things that, that make nature valuable to humans. Wetlands add variety to the landscape. They add uh, points of concentration for things like nutrients and wildlife. On Itchaway, for instance, wetlands only make up about 3% of the landscape but they actually account for about 40% of the plant species. They account for bird species, uh, a lot of amphibian species that only occur in those wetlands. Um, wetlands also hold more carbon and nitrogen in their soils. So from a, from a spatial standpoint, from a standpoint of how much area to occupy, they provide a lot more ecosystem services than say the surrounding forest. We don't know a whole lot about the function of wetlands in agricultural fields. And I think that's, that's a lot of what this study is trying to get at. We think that they have a lot of the same benefits as some of these reference wetlands, and, but we think that there are ways that we could manage them uh, to, to optimize those ecosystem services. Well, we're standing in a geographically isolated wetland that has been collecting all of the land within its watershed. And we can look at it right now and see what the water quality is, how far you can see into the water, but we don't know what this was like 10 years ago, 30 years ago, 100 years ago. What we do in my lab is we collect sediments, and these sediments are, are a historic data set that go back in time. So we can extract information uh, from these sediments and reconstruct what this wetland looked like decades ago, even centuries ago. It's important because humans have been farming on this land for a long time, but we've been learning from mistakes, learning from science, learning from research, and the practices have changed. We would love to analyze through time how those changes in practices have benefited the farming practices, the crop outputs, and other facets of the agricultural system that we have here in South Georgia. I would love to see better information that geographically isolated wetlands are doing some ecosystem services. They're doing some real good by being left on the landscape. Because as we look and, and look at nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus that's been getting into this wetland, this wetland acts as a storage basin. For example, we've looked at phosphorus, which can be a problem in many, many waterways stored in this water body behind me. And what we've calculated is just in the top, just in the top 30 to 40 centimeters alone, over 20,000 pounds of phosphorus is stored in the wetland behind me. And that's removing it from the environment, removing it and cleansing it in the water and keeping it from waterways where it can do some damage. So our overall objective is to understand how wetlands are functioning to store nutrients and sediment that are eroded from the watershed. So what we did this time was collect soil samples. We need to understand characteristics of the soil so that we know how well the soil absorbs water and can predict when it rains how much water will run directly over the surface of the soil versus sinking in and then flowing below the surface. One thing that I've learned is just how much the condition of the wetlands varies in time, um, both from year to year and from season to season, and even from decade to decade. And what we're really hoping to understand better through the project is how the different things that cause it to change, so the climate being one, and then the other main one being what they're doing with the land around the wetland, how those interact to um, determine how much water and sediment and nutrients are entering the wetland. Partnering with the Jones Center has been a great resource for us because they have such deep connections to the local community. 
we know that um, these results will be disseminated and used by people and that um, you know, we are doing research that supports the local community here. With these wetlands that we have in the fields, they've really primarily just been an inconvenience for us in the past because we're, we have to work around them. We lose crops to them sometimes if they grow and expand during the crop season after we've already planted. And what's so interesting about this research and what we've learned uh, with the, this project team is the function that they serve from a conservation and natural resource standpoint. We're always trying to implement new practices on our farm that are beneficial to our environmental surroundings. I would have never thought that these little wetlands or ponds that are that are a, a bit of an inconvenience and frustration to us actually also serve a very important function when it comes to our ecosystem. I think you can learn so much by looking at the past and, and getting new data about your farm and that could impact our practices in the future and so that's something that I think other farmers would be really interested to learn and also something that would be really helpful for us to understand from a more holistic perspective about this entire landscape rather than just our individual farm. The Flint River Soil and Water Conservation District, we get to work in this great intersection of working directly with landowners, with researchers, with water advocates, um, all, all of these different stakeholders. Any of those things we do uh, are really data-driven. To be able to take that from the research level to the actual working farm level and understand what's uh, feasible, what's practical, what makes sense for, um, for farmers, for anyone that's conservation minded and, and advocating for resources into, into conservation. You know, this, this is really a win across the board. One of the satisfying aspects about this project was that we were collaborating with our neighbors, the farmers, and it was a real privilege to get to work with them on their land, their farms, and understand how they view their role in the region. We learned a lot of things, science and otherwise. We learned that these ponds or wetlands are inconvenient. They, they can't be farmed and they can't be altered to produce a crop. So they're sort of in the way. Our studies showed that they might be inconvenient, but they're valuable. We didn't know for sure that isolated wetlands in farming environments were going to filter water. As water moves across the land, it carries materials with it, nitrogen, phosphorus, sediment. And as that water moves into and through these wetlands, those materials are removed. And so the water is purified. Many of these isolated wetlands are small. And so it's reasonable to ask the question, does one little pond in the middle of a big field matter? And the answer to that question really is, of course it matters. And you see that when you zoom out to the level of the landscape. In Southwest Georgia, there are 11,000 of these little ponds scattered about, and all of them are doing the same thing. As water moves through them, they're removing nutrients and sediment, and that is purifying the water before it moves into the groundwater and the underlying aquifers.